Hello, Herm Gailey here. Here to do a sort of a follow-up video on one we did a while ago, which was called uh, the elements of the lead change or something along those, those lines, where we sort of laid out uh, in a real broad outline the components to changing leads. What I'd like to show here today is a specific exercise that I find helps with that process, and then I'll show how that is applied in actually doing a lead change. Uh, this horse here, uh, probably familiar if you watch the channel at all, we call him Slim. He's a very nice, useful horse. Then I trail ride, then I use the pony colts. Any little job you need to do, if you need to flag a horse, if you need to uh, drag something, he's there for you. But he unfortunately is almost totally devoid of anything vaguely resembling talent. So everything he's had to do, he's had to learn. Uh, I like him enough that I want to sort of further his education and it makes him a nicer horse to ride. But he's just learning impaired enough that I think uh, really it's making me a little more thoughtful about how I address these things. So let me show you a couple of real basics that will go into this uh, exercise things that you should have available to you before you try this. Uh, we have a recent episode that shows the turn on the forehand and you certainly want to have good hip control. That's the basis of your lead change. So I like to have my turn on the forehand to where I can tip his nose this direction to the right and move his hip also to the right. See, and he can get a little stiff that's a good thing to do to loosen him up before we do these other things. So right there is one of the basic components of the lead change. You move your leg back and you move his hip. So I want to make sure he knows how to do that. Then I want to make sure he knows how to do it in motion. Now see how he wanted to raise his head and brace. So before I do anything else, I'm going to make sure he can go forward and not be hiding behind the broad. So I'm going to take his hip to the right and keep his front legs on basically the same track he was on before. And again, that's your lead change there, only you do it at a lope. So from there, we'll just come across here. You can see what I do with the legs a little better. Make sure he's going forward. And you put him on a sort of a curl and you send his hip to the right but keep his front end to the left not falling in. If you let his front end fall in that same direction, you're going to have that problem in the lead change. They're going to dive in. That's why you want to get into where you can stabilize the front end. So from there, I've got these cones set out. And I'll do a sort of an exercise involving squares, and I'll start at a walk. And I'll move his hip over. Scare him by his hip. So I'm going to move my hip back, or my leg back, move his hip over. And he has to get stuck, and that is something you can work on at the walk here will save you a lot of trouble later well, we adjusted that it'll save you a lot of trouble later in the lead change because if they get stuck like he's been doing at a walk think what it'll be like when you're when you're loping but what is nice about this exercise is you get that hip steering over and then you go forward. That forward is what takes your horse through the lead change. And you can see he wants to put his up and get behind the bridle. So I'm going to make sure he's stepping forward. Because just doing the maneuver, if he's all out of shape, doesn't get you very far. So I'll move his hip over. And then we'll pick up a trot. Move his hip over. Move his hip over.
move his hip over and make sure he goes forward. Move his hip over. He loves that cone. And maybe kick him forward a little. Kick him forward a little. Move his hip over. Move forward. And all of this is way harder for this horse than it is for some of the other ones I have who pick this up easily because it's physically easy for him. It's not as physically easy for him. Then you take it to a much higher degree of difficulty when you ask him to do this at a lope. But if I was to put him on a left lead and ask him to shift his hip, shift his hip to the right, the result would be that he'd change leads or right to. So instead, I'll pick up a counter canner Move his hip over. Counter canter. Move his hip over. Move his hip over. Move over. So you're doing a change to the right lead, but you're already on the right lead. So you don't have that change of lead in there, but you have the exact maneuver or move you're going to need to change your lead. Now I'm going to make a loop up and come across a diagonal, and we'll change a lead on him on the long diagonal. Now you could change right out of the counter canter, but you run the risk that they throw themselves over into the opposite direction. So I like to do it, especially when they're learning on a straight line. It's actually easier for him and it's easier for you to keep him straight. What I'm looking for is for him to move his hip over, which will initiate the lead change in the back end. If they shift their shoulder first, as can happen when you steer one over and try to change a lead, that may work for a while, but after a bit they learn to change front leads and that hind lead will not change right away, maybe not at all. This way, you got your horse going straight, you keep him straight, you initiate that same movement. Slide your leg back, move his hip over. Because he's loping on the left lead, the result is he reaches out as he should with his right hind leg and he's got a lead change. Now, does it always work? No. Let's see if it works this time. Now, if this, this horse, I may not change him the first time, I may go through a couple of times if he feels like he's anticipating. So I'm going to come down this line here, and he's thinking lead change. I can feel it. Maybe you can see it. So I'm going to counterbend him and go off that direction. Anticipation is a killer of the lead change. See, he wants to change lead. See him lifting up in front. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to go around again. You want them pretty pure. Because if you start letting them do the timing, you're going to be in for some trouble. I was better, but he's still thinking about it, so I'll just bend him off this direction. This time, he may feel better. I'm going to put a little right leg in him, bring the left leg back, change the lead. Keep loping. You don't want him to slow down, but you don't really want him to run through it either. You just want them to maintain their forward motion. Ooh. See, and it doesn't matter what you're doing when they... When they brace up and stop like that, you probably want to do something to break their shoulder loose and just see if they can do a civilized halt. Doesn't matter what you're working on. Something else breaks down, you may as well fix it. 
Yeah, and he's still diving down on his front end. He's not much of a stopper. So, so I'll just lope him up here. Whoa. And that was a little bit better. And I'll live with that. Wasn't what I set out working with or working toward, but I just didn't want him to think that diving down on his front end was a good thing to do. So you start out saying we're gonna work on the lead change, but you work on not having them anticipate, you work on driving them forward, you work on body control, and when you get all of those things put together, the lead change should be the easiest part because all of those shifts I did on him on that square were way more demanding than that single lead change. And the result is your horse will think, lead change is nothing. Can we just get on to it and not do all that other stuff? And after a bit, it almost becomes a sort of a, a pleasant experience for them, which is really what you're after. So that's another little piece of the lead change that I wanted to share with you. Hope it helps you, hope it was interesting, and we'll see you next time.